Adding units on the grid. It's finally time to take the units and put them on the grid. We're gonna use the widget we created in the previous video to select which unit type we want to spawn and then spawn it on top of the grid. And then we're just going to assign it a grid index. So let's get to it. So in Unreal, we're gonna finish up everything related to the user interface. So we're gonna create the action and then we're gonna create the button to call that action. So let's start by creating the action. I'm gonna go in player action. I'm going to right click on BP action, create a child blueprint class. I named it action underscore add remove unit from combat and I'm actually going to put it inside a new folder. So new folder, I'm going to name it combat and put the action inside it. Now let's open the action and in there I'm actually going to implement the event. So in the function right here, you can override and implement the execute action function right here. And to execute this action, the blueprint is going to have to know two new information. The first one is to uh, either if we want to add or remove the unit from the grid. And the second one is to know which type of unit we want to add on top of the grid if we want to add one. So I'm going to add two new variables to do that. First variable, second variable right here. The first one is still a boolean and I renamed it uh, is adding unit. So it's going to tell us if we want to add a unit or not. And then the second one is the unit type, which is of type uh, e unit type. And that's it for this blueprint for now. We're gonna come back for the logic a little bit later. We just want to finish the user interface first. So I'm gonna go back in entry and I'm going to go create the button. So in my debug menu, in my action right here, I'm going to duplicate the increase decrease style height. So duplicate that one. I renamed it button underscore action underscore add remove unit from combat and I'm going to open it. And here we want to be able to add the button list inside this widget. So what I'm gonna do is right click on the button, wrap width and select a vertical box right here. And now we can drag the button list inside the widget right under the button. And I'm going to add the two of padding. And now I renamed my button and I will also change the text that's written on it. So it's written add remove unit instead of increase decrease. And I will change the selected action for the left and right click for the add remove unit from combat for both of them like that and now i will go in the graph and here first thing i'm gonna do is implement the event for the button list so i can select it and add the event like so and i will just connect it like that with all the other ones then i'm gonna go right here at the end and i will actually delete all those four nodes because we're gonna replace them with the ones for the right action just like that. So if we are doing a left click right here, we are going to add a unit. And if we are doing a right click, it is going to remove the unit instead. And if we are adding a unit, we have to tell it which type of unit we want to add because otherwise it's not gonna know. So what we're gonna do is set the unit type and we're gonna use the unit type of the selected button inside the button list. So just like that, we can use the selected button to set the right unit type in the action. And finally, we don't want to have the button list right here, the button list that we have right here. We don't want it to be visible if we are not selecting that specific action. So that's what I'm doing right here. Here I'm setting it to visible if either the left click or the right click is selecting the add remove unit from combat action. Otherwise at the beginning writing, I'm setting it to collapse. So first it is collapse. And then if either of them are set to true, then it's going to set it back to visible. And that's it, we should now be able to add this action inside the user interface. So I'm gonna go back in entry, go in my debug menu in my tabs and open the tab pathfinding. And here I will just search for my new action. So add the remove unit from combat and drop it inside the action list right here, right beside the other ones. I'm going to give it a little bit of padding, so two of padding, and then I'm gonna go try in game to see if uh, the action works. So I'm gonna go in my tab pathfinding, add remove unit. Here we go. If I select uh, my action, it shows my little bar under it. And now I can select uh, my unit and change uh, the action if I want to. Perfect. Uh, we're done with the UI. And it's now time to do the logic of the action. But first we need a way to keep track of all the units that are on the grid. And we're gonna do that inside the grid data structure. So it is inside the grid in utilities and we are going to open S tile data right here. And I'm going to create a new variable for that. I named the variable unit on tile and it is of type BP unit. So now we are able to add a unit on top of the tile inside the data. Perfect, we're done with this one. We can close it and do a quick save all to save everything that was using that structure. And here there's actually a little bug in the engine and I'm going to show you how to fix it if it happens to you. So what I'm gonna do right now is just close the Unreal and reopen it. 
Okay, the engine is reopened and now I'm going to look at the output log right here and I'm going to scroll up a little bit and here we go, it's all red right here and the engine is a little bit confused because we edited the structure and now it seemed to have broken a bunch of stuff. Uh, that's weird, it says like unknown structure, unknown structure, unknown structure everywhere and uh, it's, it fails to initialize uh, the properties of the structure right here. And it happens for all those blueprints, uh, this one, that one, that one, this one, this one, all of them. And that's exactly what I wanted to show you because this message right here is going to prevent you from packaging your game if you are trying to. So uh, we need to fix it. And to fix that, it's super simple. We just need to know how to do it. And it is simply to resave all those assets right here. So first uh, we have the BFL uh, grid shape. Uh, so we can search in content uh, right here and then right click on it and just save. Perfect, that one's fixed. Next, we can go to the next one. So we have a BP grid right here. So let's copy it, paste it in the content, search for BP grid, right click and save. And then we have to do that for all the other ones. So BP grid is done right here. And then it's BP grid pathfinding right here. So right click, save. And then we can scroll down and do the same thing for all the other ones. So grid visual that is right here. So save that one. Then which one is the next one? Debug text on tile. Okay, perfect. Let's search for this one right here. Save. And I will do that for actually, yeah, I will do that for all the other ones. And now if I close the engine and reopen it again, then all the errors should be gone. Here we go, now the engine is reopened and if I scroll in the log, I can see that I don't have any errors. Perfect, uh, that's fixed also, good. And it's now time to do the real stuff. So, how do we add a unit in combat? Well, I think it would be better to go through another blueprint. A blueprint that we're gonna use to handle all the combat stuff. So I'm going to name it probably Combat Manager, Combat System, something like that. And we're gonna use it to first add and remove units from the combat, but also do other stuff like handling the turn system, uh, handling uh, the spells, uh, deciding if the unit has the right to cast a spell and things like that, and deciding if the unit is dead, alive, uh, things like that. We're gonna use that system during the whole series, uh, we're gonna create it today and we're gonna continue adding features in the future video. So let's do that. So I'm gonna go in my core right here and I'm going to create a new folder. So new folder, combat, open it, create a new blueprint class in it of type actor and we can name it bp underscore combat system and now we can open it and here the first thing we have to do is to have a reference to the grid because the combat system is going to need to know which grid it is using for the current combat so what i'm gonna do is is creating a new variable right here which is going to be of type bp grid right there and i will rename it grid and now just because I'm lazy, I'm just going to make it instance editable right here with the little eye icon and we're going to assign it in the editor for now. We can always change that in the future. So I'm going to compile the combat system, go back in my entry and drag the combat system inside my persistent level right here. And now what I'm gonna do is just center it in the world, so it's 0, 0, 0. Take my BP grid and I will also drop it on top of my combat system right here. So it's uh, as a child of the combat system, kinda. And then uh, we can change the grid right here. We have the grid in the bottom right corner. We can assign it using the BP grid that is inside the level, just like that. So now the combat system has a reference to the grid and it knows which grid to use for the current combat. And now we're gonna go back in the combat system and create the two functions we're gonna need. So one function to add the unit in the combat and the other function to remove it from the combat. The first function is named add unit in combat and I'm passing it to two inputs. First the unit which is a BP unit and second the index where the unit we should place it on the grid because the unit if it is in combat it should be on the grid so we have to pass it an index and tell it where to go. And the second one is remove unit from combat and we're only passing it to the unit because we don't have to specify which index we want to set because we are going to remove it. So no need for an index. We just tell it which unit we want to remove from the combat. And now to keep track of all the units that are currently in the combat, I will create a new variable for it. I named it a units in combat and it is of type BP unit, a list of BP units, so an array of BP units. And then we're gonna either add or remove from that list. So here in the add unit in combat, I will do an add on the list like so. And then when we are removing from the list, I will simply do a remove. So we are removing the unit from the list. 
Alright, so now we are adding and removing the units from the combat. We just need the one last thing and it is to place them on the right tile right here because we are adding them inside the list but we're never setting the right index on the unit. So what I'm gonna do first is duplicate that function because I want another function with the same input. So I'm going to duplicate that one which I simply renamed the set unit index on grid and I will just delete this part because we're not gonna need it. And now, just so it's easier to know which unit is on which index, I will just add a new variable inside the unit so it knows where it is. So I'm gonna go back in entry, I'm gonna go in my unit, so in units, and open the BP units. And here I will add a new variable. I named the variable index and it is of type int point, as usual. And I've also set the default value this time, so it is minus 99, minus 99. Now uh, that is done, we can now compile and close this blueprint and go back inside the combat system. And we're not ready to set the index. So the first step is to first check if the index that we receive as input is different than the current index because we don't want to do anything if it is the same index. And now that we know that the index is different, uh, we have to do a sequence because we want to do two things. First, uh, remove the unit from the previous tile that it was on in the grid data. And second, place the unit onto a new tile. So that's what we're gonna do. So here the first step is to remove it from the previous tile. So what I'm gonna do is first uh, getting the previous tile of that current index of the unit, uh, and then we can modify it uh, to remove the unit from it. And the variable right here, previous style, is a new local variable that I just created right here. And now that we set that variable, we can simply break the structure to access the unit that is currently on the tile on the structure in the data. And if it is the same unit as the unit that we received as input, we are going to remove it from that tile. So that's what we're going to do right here. And that's how we're going to do that. So here we have our structure that contains the unit in there. And what we're going to do is a set member in style data right here to be able to overwrite one of the variable in the structure. So right here in the top right corner, I can select all the variables that I want to override. So if I want to override the index, I can do it. If I want to override the transform, I can also do it. But in this case, we want to override the unit on tile. So I'm just going to check that one. And I'm actually not going to connect anything to it because we want to set it to nothing because we don't want to set a new unit on that tile. We want to remove the unit from it. So that's what we're gonna do right here by not setting anything inside that variable. And this node right here just updates the structure, so we just have to re-push it inside the grid tiles, and that's what we're doing right here. So uh, we're getting the grid tiles, we are doing an add on it just to update the content of the structure, and I'm using the same index that was already inside the structure, because we don't want to move the tile around, we want to keep the same index, so that's why we are simply using the same index here to set it back inside the data at the right place. And now that we removed the unit from the previous tile, we are simply going to place it on top of the new tile. So that's what uh, we are doing right here. The first step is to set uh, the new index inside the unit using the index that we receive as input in the function right here. And here I'm doing a quick check just to make sure that the index that we received at the beginning of the function is not minus 99, minus 99. Because first, it's not a valid index, but because we're also going to use that invalid index when we want to remove the unit from the grid. That way, when we receive minus 99, minus 99 as input, we are simply going to move the unit all the way at the opposite side of the world, just so it's not on the top of the grid. And that's why right here we are going to ignore minus 99, because we don't want to update the grid data for the tile minus 99, because that's not a real tile, it doesn't exist. So do, we don't want to update it. So that's why we are simply ignoring it. And that's how we are going to add the unit on the grid inside the grid data. So we first get the data of the new index that we received. Then we are doing a set members to apply the new unit on it. So we are setting the new unit to be the unit that we received as input also. So we are updating the new unit on the tile using the new unit. And then we are going to simply set it back inside the data the same way we did right here at the top. Okay, awesome. Now the data is updated properly and the right units are on the right tile and everything's perfect. But there's just one little problem right here. We're never setting the actual location of the unit in the world. We're never setting it. So right now it's okay in the data, it's in the right place. But the physical unit, actually the virtual unit, it's not really physical, but the unit itself, the model is never on the right tile. So that's what we're gonna add at the end of the function right here. And I think it will be nice to just add it right here if I do a sequence. So first uh, we are updating the data and then we are going to update the actual location of the unit inside the world. And that's how we're doing it. So we are simply doing a set actor location on the unit. So we are simply moving the unit to the right place in the world. 
but right here we are doing a find to get the tile location so that's right that's easy but here we are doing a select just because that if we don't find the index inside the data because let's say if we set it to minus 99 because we want to remove it from the grid right here we are simply going to move the unit out of the way so it's not on the grid anymore so i'm going to move it at the end of the world right here so minus 99 99 99 minus 99 so it's super far at the end of the world we won't see it perfect that's good enough and that's it for this function uh, so now we're just going to go hook this function inside the two other ones so in the remove unit from combat right here i'm just going to call it uh, we have to pass it the unit of course and for the index i'm just going to split it and in this case i want to remove it from the grid so i will write uh, minus 99 minus 99 so it's going to remove the unit from the grid and for the other one for the add unit in combat right here we have to call it the same function right here we have to pass it the unit right there and for the index we can simply recombine and pass it the index so index get index like so so now we are calling the two function when we are adding or removing the unit from the combat and now it's time to go hook all that up inside the new action we created at the beginning of the video but uh, since we didn't test anything in a while it might not work eh, i hope it's gonna work anyway i'm gonna go back in entry and we have to do one thing first and it is to add a new reference to the new combat system that we created inside the bp player actions so i'm just going to open that one and i'm gonna go at the begin play right here and here I simply added another get actor of class, the same way we did for the grid, but this time for the BP combat system. And I've promoted it inside a variable right here that I have just right here. I know it's not the best way to do that, but we're going to fix that in the future probably. But for now, that's good enough. So I'm just going to compile, save and close the player action. And now we can go do the real action. So I'm going to go in my actions, uh, go in the combat and open the action that I closed. I don't know why I closed it. And now in the execute action function, I will just start by removing the parent call right here because we're not doing it anything inside the parent. And then I'm just going to start by checking if we want to add a unit on the grid or remove it. So I'm just adding a little branch right here. Then if we want to add a unit on the grid, we're just going to first make sure that the index of the grid is valid because we don't want to add a unit on an invalid index. So that's what we're doing right here. And now since the conditions are perfect, we want to add the unit on the grid. But right now the unit doesn't exist. It doesn't exist in the world, so we have to spawn it. And that's what we're doing just right here. But uh, right now I'm not setting the class of the unit and it's not really nice. We're not setting the unit type, I mean. So uh, I think I'm going to go expose the unit type to the spawn. So I'm just going to go reopen the BP unit right here. I'm going to select my unit type on the left and check the expose and spawn checkbox in the top right corner, the same way we did for the widgets. So now we can compile it. And now if we go back in the action, we should now see the unit type right here and we can pass it the unit type that we have as variable. So I have my variable right here that was set in the user interface and now we can feed it directly to the unit so it's going to have the right visual and now that the unit is created and spawned in the world we can place it on top of the grid so that's what we're doing just right here so we're getting the unit and adding it inside the combat right there so combat system add unit in combat passing it the unit that we just created and the index where we want to set the unit inside the, the grid and now just because we didn't test anything in a while and I'm a little bit stressed about it, I'm just going to go test it real quick just to make sure that the ad works. So I'm going to go back in entry, press play. I'm going to go in the pathfinding tab and select my action. And here I will select a unit type, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to try with the slime. And now if I drag on the grid, okay, now I have slimes on my grid, great. And now if I try with the chicken, it seems to work. The bat seems to work also. And all the unit type seems to work perfect. Now it's a bit better. I, I know that it works so that's great okay we can now stop and go do the remove action now and it's actually pretty straightforward so we just have to first get the index that we are interested in we are getting the data of that index in the grid then we are checking if there is a unit on that specific tile so is there a unit yes okay so it's going to be valid and we want to remove it so just call the remove unit from combat inside the combat system passing it to the unit on that tile if it is valid if it's not valid well there's no unit there we don't have to remove anything perfect we can now compile and go go test all that and now I can with the left click add the units on my grid as before and now if I do a right click I should be able to remove them perfect it works I can add I can remove I can add I can remove I can add I can remove 
Perfect, uh, we're pretty much done with this action. Uh, actually, there's just one little thing we have to fix is, let's say I'm going to add a chicken right here just so we can test. I'm adding a chicken on the tile. Then I'm going to take a slime, add it on the same tile, add a bat on top of the tile, a priest uh, oh, on the side, but on the same tile and everything. So we can always add a new unit on top of the same tile. So that would be nice to just remove the previous unit when we want to add a new one, because right now, if I try to remove it, it only removes the last one because it overrides all the other ones inside the data every time we add a new unit we just can remove the last unit we added anyway we just need to uh, make sure to remove the previous unit when we are adding a new unit on a tile so that's what we're gonna do real quick right here and it is as simple as if we want to add a unit on a grid right here if it's true we are simply going to add a sequence just right there the first pin so the zero is going to be the remove so i'm just going to connect it at the bottom and now this one i can connect it at the top so we first start by removing the unit from the grid right here at the bottom and then we are adding a new one right here at the top so now if i compile and go try it it should be way better so i select my unit so a priest i can add a bunch of priests and now if i replace them with chickens we can see that it replaces them perfect and the remove still works perfectly so now i have priest and then i can add some bats to replace the priest and the chickens i can replace them i can remove them i can add some other units and now they just replace each other perfect we can now stop and now just before ending the video we're just going to polish the feature a little bit because right now let's say i have a few units on my grid right here it's all nice it's pretty the units are there they are doing their lives and that's great perfect but now what if we reduce the tile count so let's say i reduce it to maybe not in that direction but in this direction these units are not on the grid anymore so they should be removed and that's what we're gonna do that's the first thing we're gonna do and also the second thing we want to do is let's say we change the tile height right here we are updating the tile height of most of the tiles so let's say we are moving them up or down the units should be able to follow the tile height uh, right now they are not they are completely static they are at the right place if we spawn new unit uh, they should be on top of the tiles at the right height here we go but uh, if we are updating the height of the tile that a unit is already on this unit uh, doesn't update its height so uh, we're just going to go update the height of the unit and also remove them from the grid if the tile that they are on gets removed so we're just going to go quickly do those things before ending the video and to do that we're gonna need a new callback in the grid so i'm just going to go open my grid and create my new callback so even dispatcher create a new one I named it on grid generated and we're gonna go call it right after we're done generating the grid so i'm gonna go in grid generation in the spawn grid function and we're gonna go at the end which is technically right here at the end of the loop but i think it's not really that obvious so i'm just going to add a sequence right here at the beginning just so it executes everything with the loop and everything and then we can call the callback right after right here so we're doing everything we're generating the grid and then we are calling our new callback and now we're gonna go hook ourselves to this new callback inside the combat system so let's go back in there and i'm gonna go in the event graph and i'm gonna do that in the begin play so let's grab the grid connect ourselves to the callback so bind on generated bind event to on grid generated like so that we can connect back to the beginning of the begin play like so and then we can do a create event and from the node we can create a matching function right here create a matching function right here that we can rename here we go so i renamed it on grid generated and we're gonna use this function to update all the units when the grid gets updated so that way if the grid shrinks and the units are now outside of the grid we are simply going to remove all of them that are outside of the grid and uh, we can do things like uh, if the grid gets higher or stuff like that the unit uh, are still on the grid so they are just going to snap back to the right location when the grid gets generated so we are going to start by getting the units in the combat and loop through all of them just to update all of them but actually here since we are going to call the remove unit from combat when the units are outside of the grid it's going to affect the content of that list and we can't really affect the content of a list while doing a for each loop because it's just going to break the loop it's not gonna work uh, so that's why we need to kind of copy the list first and then loop through the new copied list and then we are going to be able to affect the original list so that's what we're gonna do i'm going to convert that into a local variable so promote to local variable just to be able to have a copy of the list that won't change during the for each loop and then the for each loop is going to be able to remove the unit no problem 
Here we go, just like that. So I renamed the variable a copy of unit uh, in combat, uh, and then we can iterate through the second variable. So the copy of the variable. And then inside the for each loop, it's going to modify the original variable, no problem. And now in the for each loop, what we're going to do is check if the tiles are still walkable after the regeneration of the grid. So the grid was regenerated. So we're going to check, okay, are you still walkable? Yes, no. If it's true, well, we are just going to update the unit so it adapts its height in case the height of the tile changed. Otherwise, we're just going to remove it from the grid. And that's how it looks. So here, if the tile is still walkable, we are simply going to update the index of the unit on the grid. That way, it's going to also update the height of the unit in the case that the height of the tile changed. And otherwise, we are simply going to remove the unit from the combat. And actually, that makes me think right here, we are using the is tile walkable, but that's not what we used inside the add remove unit from combat. So I'm just going to go replace that function with this one instead. So I'm going to go back in my action right here. We are checking if the index is valid, but we want to actually check if the tile is walkable. So I'm just going to replace it like that. I'm going to connect it to the new function and connect it like so, because we don't really care if the index is valid if it is not walkable, because we want to place a unit on a tile that is walkable only. Uh, so that's why we are using that one instead the perfect okay good let's go try that now i'm gonna go back here i'm gonna play uh, i'm just going to reduce my grid a little bit first like that and now i'm going to add a few units on there so a few units here and there and now we want to know if we're regenerating the grid if the units are going to be clipped out so let's say grid here and change the tile count here we go so now if the grid is smaller it cuts out all the units that are not on the grid anymore because the grid was too small perfect it seemed to work great and now we just need to make sure to also update the units when one specific tile gets updated, not only when the whole grid gets updated, because that only happens once at the beginning, but let's say the units casting a spell that are updating the height of the tiles and stuff like that, we want to also update the height of the units on the grid. So that's what we're going to do right here. And it's actually pretty similar to that one. So I'm just going to start by duplicating this function. So duplicate this function right here. I renamed the function on tile data updated and I've also added an input uh, which is the index of the tile that was just updated because we are going to update one tile and we want to update only that one tile. And that's how I'm doing it right here. So we are comparing the index before doing any of that. We are just going to check uh, if the index is the same as the index that we receive as input right here. And actually, if we want to be a little bit more efficient, since there's only one unit per tile, uh, we can replace uh, the for each loop right here by a for each loop uh, with break, uh, like so. That way, when we find uh, the first unit, uh, we can simply stop uh, looping because we found the unit that was on the tile. So we are going to loop uh, the body right here until we find uh, one unit that corresponds to the index. And if we find one, well, we can simply connect all that back to the break so it stops the for each loop. Uh, I'm just going to add a few reroute nodes so it's a little bit cleaner like that, like that so now here we go so we are updating the tile and once we update the unit it's just going to break the loop and it's going to stop looping here we go now we just have to go call this function when one tile on the grid gets updated so i'm just going to go hook myself in the big and play right here from the grid we can search for um bind on updated bind on tile data updated like so i can just connect it just like that i can copy paste the create event just right here and then assign my new function that i just created like so and now we can compile and go test that to see if it works so back on my little grid right here i will now try to uh, increase or decrease the tile height and we can see that now the units are updated with the grid awesome that works great and now if we change the tile type to let's say something that is an obstacle we can see that it also renew removes all the units and now let's say if I try to increase the tile height for all of these it should work and it seems to work perfectly great uh, but there's just one little bug right here if I go back in the pathfinding and now I try to add remove unit and I try to remove with the right, right click on the units that were updated that we try to update the tile we can see that they are now broken we can't remove them uh, if I add new units and I remove them it works so that's not a problem we can add and remove units that's not a problem but what if I add unit, go back in the grid and try to increase the tile height to let's say those ones and then I decrease this one and now if I go back in the pathfinding and try to remove the unit, I can't remove, can't remove, can't remove, ah this one I can't. So there's a little bug somewhere that we have to go fix. 
And the problem is actually in two places. So I'm gonna go in my actions, in my uh, grid actions right here. I have the uh, decrease tile height and also the set tile type. So I'm just going to open those two actions right here. And we can see that when we added the unit on tile right here uh, to the structure, it didn't attach it automatically to the function. So now it's a little bit broken. So I'm just going to reattach them like so. And I'm gonna do the same thing in the set tile type right here at the end of the function, we have to reconnect the unit. That way it should work because right now it was just uh, canceling uh, the unit that was uh, sitting on the tile. So now if we play and we try, it should work perfectly. Here we go, now I have units, I will just increase the tile height and I will change uh, the tile type for those units also, just to make sure that both of them works. And now if I go in the remove and I try to remove them, we can see that we can remove them, no problem. Perfect, uh, that's fixed. And now there's just one last thing I want to do before ending the video and it is if let's say I add a few units in combat. Here we go, I add a few units. We can see in the list uh, on the top right corner, I will just filter it a little bit better. We can see that the units are spawned in the game. So that's good, we can spawn any units that we want. Here we go, I have 70 units on my grid. Okay, good. Now I'm just going to delete them. Delete, 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 delete. We can see that we are still showing 70 units. Uh, there are still 70 units in the world, and that's because we are never destroying them. We are just placing them in minus 999. I don't know where it is, but it should be somewhere. Here we go. Here they are in the void. I don't know where my level. Ah, oh, my level is over there. So they are here in the level, and they are still there. They are living their lives and stuff, but I think it will be better to destroy them in this case. Uh, we don't always want to destroy the units. Uh, in the level when we are removing them from the grid but in this case we want to so that's what we're gonna do we're just gonna add the option to destroy the units when we are removing them from the grid if that's something that we want to do and to do that I'm gonna go back in the combat system and go in the remove unit from combat function right here and I'm going to add a new input uh, it's going to be a boolean which I will rename to uh, destroy uh, unit uh, something like that and I will change the default value to true because I want it to be destroyed the units uh, by default. And now I will drag from it and do a branch right here. Here we go, connect it like so at the end and then grab my unit and destroy the actor if that's what we want to do. So destroy actor. Here we go, connect it after my branch, just like that. And now we should uh, destroy the units uh, when this Boolean right here is true. I will just add a few reroutes nodes so it's a little bit more clear right here, right there. Here we go, but yeah. Uh, so now we are destroying the units that we don't need. So now if I compile, go back, test it, uh, tactical mode, here we go. Add a bunch of units in the world, here we go. I have, let's say, uh, 117 units in the world. And now if I destroy them, zhoop, it goes back all the way down to uh, 32. Here we go. That's perfect. Uh, we are now way better because we are destroying all the units. Great. And here we go. That's gonna be it for today. We did a bunch of stuff. We added a bunch of units on the grid and then a few functionalities that were pretty interesting and useful. So great. We're gonna be uh, ready for the next few episodes. Awesome. So I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Uh,